to speak about Jakey, Leslie Wilberforce Jacob. He and I shared many years of a professional working relationship. When I looked in the annals of history, I remember that he was working first at income tax. And we had a conversation. And shortly after that conversation, I'm not too sure about the intermediary pieces, J.K. found his way at the National Provident Fund at the NIS. So J.K., the employee, was dedicated. He was committed. He was humble. He was selfless. As I thought about sharing this tribute today, I tried to recall one instance that as a director, Jakey and I would have had that resulted in what we would say in local language in bad blood. I searched from every year and I couldn't find any. But there are instances, had Jakey not been who he was, that obviously what took place could have resulted in bad blood. But Jakey being Jakey, if he assessed a situation and he thought that I was not happy with his representation, after the meeting, Jakey will find his way on a one-on-one -on -one in my office. And the first thing Jakey will do is to apologize and to make sure that we were on the same page. He loved his work and he dedicated his time selflessly. I remember Jakey the student when he attended the University of the West Indies to have the diploma in social security and when I had the opportunity to lecture in the program as the last lecture of bringing everything together as we spoke about emerging issues in social security and when Jakey encountered the challenge geez, because sometimes not being in familiar territory J.K. will exhibit a tendency to be afraid and not live from his full potential. But we had a conversation following week one of that course. And I reassured him and I said, J.K., you're not an actuary, but you can study and pass this exam as it relates to actuarial principles governing social security. You're not an investment specialist, but you have what it takes to pass this course. You don't have your doctorate in social policy, but you have an understanding of working with persons on the ground. And as a lecturer who have been doing this program for many years, I can tell you if you represent a story in terms of what social security ought to be and what social security must represent, then you will get your mark. Jakey took those comments to heart. And on having the opportunity to assess his final grade and his paper, Jakey did exceptionally well. And I remember when he was told of his passing grade the joy he felt knowing that he did it and he had persons around him who supported him. I had the opportunity to see him on returning to St. Vincent three times. Once I was going to visit my dad and he was walking down Glen Road and he flagged me down and said, boss, you back? I said, yes, I'm here and I'm in transition. I don't know what that means yet. And we had a conversation. 
and the issues that we discussed in that conversation were sacred to Drakey. They were family, Bev, they were about his son, Kareem, they were about life and living after NIS, and they were about a journey, his next step, what he thought would be the next step for Jakey. The second occasion was when we visited him as a team when he was in hospital and Bev, I encountered you then. And we shared. Those are moments of anxiety and of fear. And when I visited him one Sunday before his passing, because I was in South Rivers and I determined that no matter what the condition of the roads were, how many landslides they were, I was not going to get to South Rivers and not proceed to Georgetown to see him. He was asleep, but his presence and his demeanor gave me a sense of comfort and a sense of peace that no matter what happens, Jakey will be well. So on my own behalf, on behalf of all of us who shared with you here, Bev, as you sang in the choir over and over, as you raised your son here and daughter, I offer my own condolences. In the words of the hymn that the choir will sing shortly, I know that my Redeemer lives. He lives to bless me with his love. He lives to plead for me above. And in the words of scripture, you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. It is my prayer that the memories of your dear husband, a father, a friend, a colleague, a confidant as he was to many in the office that we too will experience God's grace God's comfort God's blessings and God's strength during this time of loss may his soul rest in peace we call now Angelique James and after Angelique James we will have Antoinette Jacob and after Antoinette Edwin Lewis would come. So could you please proceed to the mic in the order in which I've just announced. Angelique James, Antoinette Jacobs, and Edwin Lewis. So at this time, we'll ask Dr. Glasgow to come to share her tribute, and that will be followed by a song. Shane Berging, an employee, former employee of the NIS, or almost said an employee of the NIS, will sing for us. Good afternoon, everyone. I remember vividly when I encountered Leslie Wilberforce Jacobs on Thursday, the 2nd of January, 1987, when I joined the staff at the then National Insurance scheme. I was sharing an office with Mr. Leon Snag, and I remembered Jakey, as we affectionately called him, Jakey Adosha, coming to the door and he said good morning. He went to the front and signed his name. And then he came back and said, 
snag. Oh God, they should call this national insurance shame and national insurance same salary. Because at that time, the NIS was aligned with the government public service. So salaries and everything were the same. I chuckled to myself and said, this man is humorous. As time went by, JK and I developed a very close bond, a good friendship. And at that, strengthened in 1995 when I was appointed as the manager of the benefits and contributions division. So I was the manager and Jakey was the supervisor of the benefits division. Jake knew the legislation, but sometimes he would come and say, Miss G, remind me of what this means. And I will explain to him, and he said, it's true, it's true, it's true. Over time, Jake was transferred to the compliance division. And I can say, without fear of contradiction, that Jake took on that responsibility seriously. He understood what it meant for employers to contribute on behalf of their employees. And when that did not happen, JK, without pride or prejudice, would explain to them the importance of making a contribution so as not to deprive the employee or his family of an NIS benefit. I traveled several times with JK, and I remembered precisely when we went to Mexico. JK was really in Troy. He was speaking about the place, and he said, I like it. Jakey, as an employee, was very loyal, very committed. He had the interest of the NIS at heart. Family also meant something for Jakey. His family of origin. He will always speak about Mama, Daddy, Lennox, all of them. So I knew all the names of his relatives. He spoke about them. And then, when he met and married Bev, well, when he met Bev, and he told me about Bev, I said, Bev was my schoolmate in a Jakey. She was my schoolmate. We went up to school together. And then he married Bev, and Bev and Karim, Bev and Karim, almost everything was Bev and Karim. I want to say that Leslie Jacobs, Leslie Wilberforce Jacobs, Jakey was a loyal person, loyal, efficient, sensible, loving, and intuitive, and efficient, very, very much so. When I heard about when Dexter Jack WhatsApp me and said that Jakey died, I said, who Jakey? He said, our Jakey. I was really taken aback by that, but you know, I'm comforted by the fact that J.K. was a genuine, humble, and loving person. Loved his friends, and he always did his best to ensure that things were going smoothly in his department and at the general NIS. Death is the last enemy that will be destroyed. One day, Death itself will die. Until then, Jakey, a man of incredible grace, rest in peace, sweet be thy rest. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. 
So I am going to do a song dedicated to the family. Must have been cold air in my shadow to never have sunlight on your face. You were content to let me shine, let you in. You always want to stay. So I was the one with all the glory While you were the one with all the strength A beautiful face without a name for so long, a beautiful smile to hide the pain. Do you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I would like to be. But I've got it right here in my heart I want you to know I know the truth Of course I know it That I will be nothing without you We now hear from Edwin Lewis to be followed by Andin Carrington and then Leslie Jeffrey. Good afternoon. I would like to extend my sincere condolences to the grieving family and to speak words of comfort to them. Jesus in the book of Matthew stated, Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. There is hope of being comforted during this time of grieving to those who are mourning. We do understand that the 
pain of losing the loved one never goes away. We just get better at carrying the burden. So that blessed hope of promise, comfort, is what we here to hold on to. Leslie Wilberforce Jacob, we called him Jakey. He was my good friend. I met Jakey many years ago on the cricket field. We played cricket on opposing teams. And from the early days, I was drawn to Jakey by his good sense of humor and being very jovial. Jakey was a competitor. And he would talk you into submission. He played the game of cricket to win. And please do not ever lose to his team. You would hear a phrase like, watch blows. Man, take your loss and come back next year for more. And you would be hearing those words for the year and the days, the weeks to come. Wheresoever and whenever he meets you, you would hear about those blows. I admired Jakey over the many years interacting with him. He was an honest, loyal, dependable, hardworking, and a trustworthy friend. He was a friend and a man to his words. Jakey kept his promises and was always ready to help whenever he is approached. Over the many years, Jakey and I grew to be like brothers and became family when he got married to Miss Beverly Ann Williams, now Jacob, my wife's cousin. We migrated to North America, but Jakey and I kept in constant communication Whenever we visit and vacation our business, Jakey and I would get together and we would have a good time. Jakey loved to give jokes. He would make you laugh. Whenever you are wrong, Jakey, make sure that you are ready to laugh because he's going to give jokes. He would speak of his many trips he had and would give jokes about his experiences from Guyana in the south up to Canada in the north. My good friend Jakey was the one who worked on helping my wife and I in getting our NIS benefit. And we thanked him for his effort. It was our good friend Jakey who had encouraged us to purchase the property which we now own in Golden Vale. We were sitting one afternoon and we were conversing in purchasing a property in St. Vincent. And Jakey said to us, there is a property not too far from where I'm living, Mr. Lewis, by the property. So whenever you return to St. Vincent, you would have it and we would hang out and have fun. That's the JK I know. My response was, we do not have anyone, JK, to look over this property when we are in North America or to take care of the property. His response was, Mr. Lewis, you don't have to worry. I will look over your property. I'll take care of your property. You do not have to pay me anything, was his reply. 
he was a man to his word and he kept his promise up to the day he died my wife and I came back in St. Vincent late August of this year and it was while we were in conversation with Jakey who told us that he was not feeling well he was always cold and always feel like sleeping we advised Jakey and encouraged him to see the doctor a few weeks later Jakey was rushed to the hospital and whatsoever was his ailment it took him away from us however I was fortunate to visit Jakey while he was at Georgetown Hospital on his sick bed and had the privilege to have led him in the sinner's prayer and he accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior so I am confident that my good friend and my brother Jakey is with the Lord among the saints and the angels the old cliche of he will be greatly miss stand true in Jakey's faith he will be greatly missed Jakey was a good friend a friend indeed a friend in whom you could trust a friend that would always be there to help whenever he acts. So my goodbye today to Jakey, it is not final. It is by Jakey. See you later. So sleep in perfect peace, my friend, until we meet again over there. I have the assurance of knowing it is well with your soul. Jakey's memories will live on. God bless. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, this song that I'm going to sing, it was requested by Mrs. Jacobs. And it's a very old wedding song. And it may be question why she asked, why she requested it. But as I look at the words, they are very powerful words, and she just wants to let us know today how much Mr. Jacobs meant to her. Uh...
couldn't see You were my eyes when I couldn't see You saw the best there was in me Lifted me up when I couldn't reach You give me faith cause you believe I'm everything I am because you Gave me wings and made me fly You touched my hands, I could touch the sky I lost my faith, you gave it back to me You said no star was out of reach You stood by me and I stood tall I had your love, I had it all I'm grateful for each day you gave me made Because I was loved by you You were my strength You were my eyes when I couldn't see You saw the best that was in me Lifted me up when I couldn't reach You gave me faith cause you Shining your love into my life You've been my inspiration Through the lies you are the truth My world is a better place Because of you You were my Technology being what it is, we are now able to have the presentation from Angelique James and Antonek Jacob. They would come via the electronic means so you look on your screen. Following that, we will have the scriptural sentences and the commencement of the service. And the last tribute will come in the program itself. So Leslie will sing after the national insurance services so at this point in time we have via zoom and telecommunication the tribute from relatives of wilberforce angelique james and antonette jacob
was always there to pick us up at the airport and host us at his house for our vacation. He was a fan of men. There was nothing he wouldn't do for a man of other because his family was everything to him. I'd like to share a few of the memories I have made with him over the years of vacation at his house. The first memory is of the plum tree in the backyard and how one day my brother and I decided but on our way down, my brother ended up getting caught. So I had to run into the house to get with mom and Uncle Leslie. So that day, Uncle Leslie ended up having to climb on the plum tree himself to help my brother down because he didn't get down until Another fun memory that I always cherish is when my brother, Ray, and I would stay up late with Uncle Leslie just to buy some candy because we were all hungry. Speaking of food, I remember one night. Craving some fried chicken. So my brother and I, along with Uncle Leslie, walked all the way from the house to the main road just to get six pounds of fried chicken wrapped in tin for the food truck. I made her our way all the way back to his house the so, A lot of my favorite memories of him were walks around food because we always made sure we were fed. Most of the time, it was Kentucky fried chicken, and a lot of those times,
to see everybody, which is so ironic that we got to see all the nieces, all the nephews, all the sisters. So I don't know if it was karma, but we were so happy, we were so pleased, and we were so grateful that we were able to see them last year. And I just want to thank everybody for coming. Um, from Canada, we said all the love and wishes. And we just want to thank you. We just want to talk about and for some. Stay strong. We are here, even though we're distance across the ocean. We are here. We're going to support you. We're going to be here. We are here for you. And we love you. We thank everybody for coming to celebrate the life of blessing and the world of Jacob. Praise the Lord, everyone. May I invite us all to stand at this time as we commence the formal proceedings for the service of thanksgiving for the late Leslie Wilberforce Jacob, just so that we are quite aware when it comes to the tribute, the National Insurance Services will sing first, that will be followed by Leslie and Jeffrey, then Jaden Williams, and then the choir of the Calico Methodist Church will sing last. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be the Lord both of the dead and of the living. Jesus said, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and of hell. Because I live, you will live also. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain. For the first things had passed away. Let us begin the very formal part of this service of remembrance and thanksgiving by singing together the hymn through all the changing scenes of life in trouble and in joy the praises of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. Oh God, you gave us life. And you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Give to us now your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live. So that living or dying, our life may be in you and that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love in Christ our Lord. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you now. Especially today, we praise you for Leslie, whom you have graciously received into your presence. And so, Lord God, to all of those whom we remember today, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them. And help us so to believe even where we have not seen. And bless us with your presence as you lead us through our years. And bring us in time with them into the joy of your home. A home not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends and brothers and sisters, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Leslie. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace and especially his widow and son and other members of his family so that in pain 
we all may find comfort. In sorrow, we may find hope. And in death, resurrection. And so we welcome in our presence today, especially the Honorable Camilo Gonzalez, the representative for this geographic area in St. Vincent and the Honorable Minister of Finance. We welcome you, sir, and we welcome the manager and other staff of the National Insurance Services and all the other distinguished persons here present today on behalf of Leslie's family, we welcome you. At this point in time, we will invite the eulogy by Mr. Cornelius Walker. Good afternoon to everyone. I recognize our sister, dear sister, Idelia. I say that because when I, first, when I first, when Jakey started to work, I knew that, you were saying something? Hey? Idelia. Oh, sorry. You look so much like Idelia. <laughs> they, I, I met her through, through Jakey. So I know that they were very good friends. And so we, got, you know, knew each other from that time. On the Monday after my, after my, my cousin, my best friend, after he died, I picked up my little grandson. I'm sorry? Not hearing. I picked up my grandson, um, who goes to the uh, Kingston prep, prep School. And I said to him, or I asked him, if he remembers Jakey. He said to me, yes. And then I said to him, he died. He said, what? And I found that was so profound. I went on to ask, he went on to ask me if Jakey was sick. And I said, yes. You see, we can never get accustomed to death, no matter what. There will always be surprises for as long as we live, because everybody expects to live. Sorry for dropping my voice. Everybody expects to live. And many persons who called me express the same sentiment and surprise. Leslie Wilberforce Jacobs grew up in the village called Bible where his father Wilberforce Jacobs was born and bred. Both his mother, Gertrude Jacobs, originally from Sign Hill, and father, along with four children, born up to that time, had returned to St. Vincent from Curuso, where they had lived and worked from the early years, in, from the early 1950s to the early 1960s. He worked, it's, that is to say his father worked, with the oil refinery company called Shell, and his wife worked or was self-employed as a seamstress. After they returned to their, na to their native land, St. Vincent, they added two more children to their family, bringing the count to six. Sometimes, Jakey would hear 
in particular his sister saying to him, you weren't born in Curacao, you know, you were born in St. Vincent. And he never liked that. He always wanted to hear that he was born in Curacao. But the reality of it was, he was born in St. Vincent. Lennox the first born, and unfortunately, Lennox lost his life last year. At the age of 63, the same age that his brother lost his life. That's something to think of. His first, Lennox is first born, Sherman and Jasmine, the third and fourth respectively, were born in Curacao. Leslie, the second born, Alonzo and Alfonso, the, 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 la the two last ones who brought up the way, were born in St. Vincent. Leslie, Leslie, though he was with the family on their return from Curacao, was not born there, as I said before. But in fact, was given birth to in St. Vincent, to which she, being with child, that is to say his wife, his, um, his mother, being with, with child, um, had returned on vacation. Had returned to St. Vincent on vacation. In the process of time, the children born in Chuso migrated to Canada, and those born in St. Vincent remained here. That is including Alfonso, Alonzo, and Leslie. That was, I dare say, pretty bizarre. It wasn't by design, it was just, it just happened. Sandra, Pamela, and Eulalie Bonadi, siblings, of, siblings living in Canada, are their mother's children and they preceded them. You would have heard Antoinette um, saying that, that Pam lives there and that they're their oldest sister. Let's attend the Bible Methodist Primary School and then went to the Adelphi Secondary and the St. Martin School where he completed his secondary education. His attendance at school was often interrupted due to frequent automatic asthmatic attacks during his adolescent and teenage years. This posed a serious challenge to him as well as to his mother especially. It's not to say his father wasn't concerned, but his mother was, was very concerned about his, his condition and his plight. Because I, I, there were times when I being close to him, a cousin, his father, his father's father, and my, and my mother's mother were brothers, were brother and sister, sorry, were brother and sister. So we were very close. I, I really didn't learn that until about three or four days ago. My wife is the one who told me that. I mean, what a travesty. Um, so, the, so that's how we were very close from, from all yarn. All right? She used conventional and traditional medicine. You're still on this, the topic of his condition. She used uh, traditional and conventional medicines and all proved futile. She knew that the situation was dire and something urgent and miraculous had to be done, but no, not what. Then as if inspired by God, she being a faithful servant, placed him in the midst of them, that is to say his his father and the children who were there at the time, and poured out her heart to God and said, I quote, and, and that's a calling to her, her, her daughter, one of her daughters, Oh God, please take this asthma from him. He cannot go any longer, unquote. That prayer changed things for him and his asthmatic episodes. And his asthmatic episodes were all over. He never had another attack, as far as I know. I have, I, have, I have seen him on many occasions. He would come by me and he would spend time 
after he got married, before he got married, and I never, and I had, ex I had seen him, as I said, and sometimes I couldn't bear watching him struggling for breath, struggling, really struggling. And that was really devastating to his mother and to all who were close to him. That prayer changed things, as I said, and his asthmatic episodes were all over. In the words of James 5 and verse 16, it says, The aggressive, passionate prayer of a godly man has the power to accomplish much. This, indeed, was answer to his mother's prayer, passionate plea. With his health issues behind him, Leslie was able to take part in sporting activities like cricket, football, and the likes. He joined the Bible Wanderers Cricket Club and played local, local cricket in local cricket competition for a while. I'm told by Royal Kane that he was picked mainly as an R spinner. Though he was an exciting batsman, he was referred to as Carl Hooper. That flamboyant Guyanese batsman, or spinner, slash or spinner, who won the hearts of many fans playing for the West Indies. He, he, had, he had keen and sharp eyes and always seemed to have all the time in the world to play his shots, especially against the fast or medium pace bowler. He would take your best ball and dispatch it with consummate ease over long on or long off. And if you dare bounce at him in retaliation, he will with disdain hook you to the boundary. His overconfidence sometimes brought about his downfall. Because almost in an anticlimax, he would take a totally innocuous ball, following an exciting shot, and play it in the hands of the feeler as if he was playing catching. Our brother Cain said one day he saw him take a blinding catch of a, a, bats, a batsman. And the batsman stood in awe and, in awe and decided he's not going to come out the wicket. He's going to continue to play. But that boy, well, he had very good eyes. Playing catching, that disappointed many of his fans. His brother, Al, recalls that he, he once played against the St. Vincent Grammar School and he was savage on the bowlers, hitting the ball to all parts of the boundary. <laughs> he was indeed a wonderful player to watch. Jakey, after the, he qualified himself, sought employment which he gained in 1977. I started to work in 1974 and I know somewhere along the line JK had had a stint before he started to work at NPF, National Problem Fund. And the, 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 the thing is, I was close to where he worked and I think our brother Thomas yeah, brother Thomas said that he worked at income tax for a while. It was a project they had, I can remember vividly, and it lasted for a few months. And then when he left, he, he was employed at N N N NPF. I'm not sure who was instrumental there, but I suppose somebody that I knew may have, I wouldn't call names, would have been instrumental there. And he grabbed it with both hands. He gained employment in 1977 and he grabbed it with both hands. He was employed with the then National Provident Fund, which changed formulation and name to National Insurance, National Insurance Service. One time it was National Insurance um, Scheme, but that changed to National in its current 
jurisdiction so to national insurance service as we know it today jakey walked through all those changes and learned as much as he can of the operation and workings of the establishment he was apt and willing to learn honest trustworthy dedicated and very helpful i remember just before he left it might have been a year or so there was a friend of mine who unfortunately lost her job the post was made redundant she was sent home with a package but it is not an inexhaustible amount of money it will run out and i called her one day after about maybe two or three years and i asked her if if she was receiving a pension from nis and she said no and i thought that was strange so i said let me call him about it and i called him and i told him exactly what the situation was and he said to me Yes, she's entitled to it. He will check it out and get on back to me. It wasn't long after he got on to me and he told me what to do. I explained to the lady what to do. She did that. Between two weeks to a month, she was receiving a pension. Sadly, she didn't benefit from that benefit because she lost her life not, not long after. So he loved his work and he committed himself to doing it, often walking beyond the call of duty in ensuring that pensioners' concerns and queries were attended to and dealt with in the most efficacious and professional manner. Leslie worked in every department of NIS except accounts, I'm told, and enjoyed them all, but seemed to have had a preference working in the compliance department. And I think our sister, Minerva Glasgow, said that. He, there was something in him. He wanted to make sure that things were right. Prior to his retirement, he was assigned to the office of the manager of maintenance, at which point his long and illustrious career came to an end after working for some time in that office. He had worked for 41 years from 1977 to 2018. For Jakey, as he was familiarly called by his friends and colleagues at NIS, it was not only work. He was outgoing and fun-loving, and so he took advantage of every opportunity to travel with the NIS Sports Club to various countries. He always took along his wife, Bev, and they enjoyed every moment of it. They visited countries like Barbados, Trinidad, Guyana, Antigua, St. Kitts, St. Lucia, etc. Let's see, I had, had, had many close male friends with whom he associated. during his teen and early adult years. And they would from time to time attend various sporting and other activities together. He was at one time for about a year or two, somewhere in the 1990s involved, in, involved as treasurer of the committee which organized the rural carnival in, in, in Bible. He didn't like the conduct of some of the participants after the conclusion of the festivity and so he decided never to get involved in the rural carnival again. One of his best friends, and I said, one of his best friends, he had many best friends back there in Bible. He had persons like Fishy, I'm not sure if, he, if, he, if he's here, Bahol, um, Duckstick, and these are nicknames. You see, what happened is that those guys in that clique in that epoch gave themselves contemporaneously nicknames <laughs> oh, I'm... and but I, 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 let me say short let me say in short that fishy got his name don't know why they call him fishy and that's royal kane as we know him to be 
And Jakey got his name as Asha knows. And that was so, uh, well, it wasn't strange in that the reason they call him Asha knows is because he, has a, he had a straight and, and, and a prominent nose. So they call him uh, Asia nose. But over time, they dropped off the, the nose and call him Asia. And then some people who didn't know what is it they were really saying, call him Dosha, that stuck with him. One of his, so one of his best friends at the time was Elroy. And they went together on many joy rides and, ep and escapades. But when he met Beverly Williams, he knew that he had found the love of his life. Instead of going out with his, his usual friends, he went out with his newfound friend. The shy, reticent person that he seemed to have been had suddenly been transformed. Not many months after, they both got married and the rest is history. Solomon said in Proverbs 18.22, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and he obtains favor from God. So in the passage of time, Jakey did have favor bestowed upon him. Bevy's wife brought forth a son whom they called Kareem. Leslie and Bev had a very good marriage and a wonderful relationship. And in Bev's own words, he was a faithful, caring, and loving husband and father. As for his son Kareem, he grew into a, a, a very manly, respectable young man, much to the credit of both his, his mother and father, who wasted no time in, in instilling discipline and certain core values in him. Kareem graduated from the community college after his primary and secondary education, and Jakey and his wife looked forward to seeing his only child go off to university in order to further his, uh, his studies. But unfortunately, this did not happen in his lifetime. I'm sure that somewhere, sometime in the future, he would honor his father's wish. Jakey's sudden passing was left, has left a void. In Beverly Jacobs, his wife, in his dear, wife's, in his dear wife Beverly Jacobs, and the rest of his family. He would have left a void as well in his brothers, his nieces, his friends, his cousins, the people with whom he worked, and all those persons who were concerned. May he rest in peace. And now we continue with the tributes as they appear on the order of service. The Calico Methodist Church Choir, followed by the staff of the National Insurance Service and Mr. Jaden Williams.
Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I have with me a message from the executive director, which I would read before the. Once again, good evening. And first, I start with a message from the executive director, who unfortunately should be on his way here. When we think about the legacy of loved ones leave on our lives, the legacy our loved ones leave on our lives and in our hearts, many words come to mind. Compassion is what our director remembers. Jovial is what our customer service manager remembers after 34 years. Busy is what our compliance manager remember, remembers. And for other managers, caring, a role model, supportive, in a hurry, understanding, humble, easygoing, kind, amiable, and efficient. Debt, and indeed a debt so sudden and painful, like the death of our former co-worker, Mr. Leslie Wilberforce Jacobs, also known as Jakey, by all staff members, makes us realize that, makes us realize the brevity of life. We often take life for granted, too much so. His death has made us sit down and reflect. It has made us take time to appreciate the loved ones in our lives, more because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Leslie Jacobs' entry into the NIS dates to 1983 under the NPF. He was transferred from the Inland Revenue Department of the Government Public Service. Jakey worked in several departments of the NIS registration and contributions, benefits, compliance, and maintenance. He gave human service in all these departments. But I would like to focus on his years as a compliance officer and manager. Jakey understood his duties as a compliance officer, manager, and got down to the task, sparing no effort to bring money and records. I can say unequivocally that Leslie Jacobs made a difference to the compliance at the NIS. I witnessed his tremendous growth and development. The development came not only in compliance matters, but in maturity and character as well. Jakey learned to manage his time, work in group situations under strict deadlines, and to recognize the importance of a strong work ethic, persistence, and intellectual integrity. He has been one of the, mo he has been one of the most valuable members of the compliance department. The fact that he got one year extension is a testament to that fact. Besides being a joy to work with, Jakey knew how to present creative ideas and communicate the benefits. He traveled with officers on several of the NIS construction surveys. Some members of the NIS staff said, if we could sum Jakey up in one word, it would be grace. He was incredibly thoughtful and helpful. His dedication was total and his insight razor sharp. He took on all sorts of causes, cases, and clients. Jakey was almost a man utterly at peace with himself. He was always quiet, easygoing, peaceful, peaceable, and a caring gentleman. He never engaged in any hostile behavior, even though circumstances mutilated against him. And in this, he was a remarkable, he was remarkable and admirable. Jakey was a wonderful employee who understood the meaning of the word team. He was always more focused on the good of the company and the department than his own benefit. He made many great contributions to the company and helped it move forward in numerous ways. His work here will not be forgotten. The shock of his death is a hard reminder of mortality, but also brings out the lesson of his well-lived life, that to leave this place a better place than you found it is perhaps the greatest epitaph. We extend sincere condolences to his family. Jakey was a remarkable man, and everyone who worked with him at the NIS is better for having known him. For those of us that had the privilege of calling him a friend, we are humbled by his kindness and compassion to everyone around him. 
he will be greatly missed and everyone here is saddened by his death know that our thoughts and prayers are with you during this difficult time may he rest in peace on behalf of the NS board members of staff management thank you
Good afternoon to everyone. I'm going to sing this very short song. Um, I want to say to Bev, Kareem, for the faith. God will give us more than we can bear. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain. And you've got peace of mind Like you've never known But things change When you're down in the valley Don't lose hope For you never alone For the
Thank you very much. And we will hear now from the Galileo Methodist Church. And may I, may I just request that the keyboardists and the bassmen stay at your instruments, please? It's, it's all right. It's all right for you to stay and join Sister Drew whenever we, we, we sing in something. Don't run away, all right?
And now we join our voices together in singing another hymn chosen by the family who fathoms the eternal thought, who talks of scheme and plan. The Lord is God. He needeth not the poor device of man. be seated and now as we come to the ministry of the word and invite those who have been assigned to read to do so in the order as it appears I want to complete uh, the protocol that will be that I began with it at the start uh, when the NIS staff came up this side to sing I recognize the Honorable Gentleman from Central Kingstown, Major Sinclair Leacock, in the congregation. And on behalf of the family, I would want to welcome you, Honorable Sir. I think, too, it is appropriate for me to recognize in the balcony the Reverend Father Ulrich Jones and his dear wife, Good to see you here today, sir. I suspect that tomorrow at this time, you will be at another funeral. 
the funeral of your dear sister. And so on behalf of the family, on behalf, on behalf of all of us here, and the members of Calicor, we extend condolences to you. And certainly it is under your faith in God that will see you present here today at a time like this. And so we invite the readings now from Holy Scripture. Reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The scripture reading comes from the book of Colossians, 1 Colossians, chapter 15, verses 50 to 58, and it reads thus. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. So when this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on incorruption, I immortality so this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal have put on immortality then shall it be brought to pass saying that it is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God, which give us us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounded in the work of the Lord. For as such as ye know, that the, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here ended the reading. Now we invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. Good afternoon, everyone. The scripture reading is taken from St. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 6. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. 
in my father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would not have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if you go prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to me except for the Father through me. 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not give you as, as the world gives, gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not let them be afraid. There's a scripture reading. Um, before I go, um, my cousins in uh, Canada would like to say thanks to everybody that came, especially the NIS for showing up. Thank you. Now we join another hymn chosen by the family. It is known in the Methodist circles as the Methodist Anthem, the great hymn of Charles Wesley. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood?
be seated. Bold I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. Let us pray. May I speak now in the name of Christ, my Savior, in the power of the Holy Spirit, my inspiration and guide to the glory of God, my Father. And may the words spoken now and the yearning and meditation of all our hearts be heard and understood in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, Amen. I almost want to sing it. If a man dies, will he live again? If a man dies, will he live again? If a man If a man dies, shall he live again? Job chapter 14 and verse 14. In the minds of many persons, death is unreal, a misfortune. Something to be feared. We are often haunted by what, for some people, is the uncertainty of what lies beyond the grave. And so, like Job, we ask the all-important question. If a man dies, will he live again? Job was a really good man. About the best man we could hope to find. Yet, Misfortune overwhelmed him. Loss of family and wealth is followed by serious, prolonged suffering. And all of that shakes his faith 
to the limits. He longs for death. And he pleads with God to hide him in the land of the dead until God's anger is past. But he wonders to himself. Even as he contemplates his request of God, he wonders. And he speaks out aloud. If a man dies, will he live again? Is there anything beyond death and the grave? When this complicated machine knows as a hu known as a human body collapses, when the heart stops functioning, when the brain ceases to think, Is that the end? The author of Psalm 46 declares, and I quote, When man's breath departs, he returns to the dust. On that very day, his thoughts perish. Unquote. And God is alleged to have said to Adam, and I quote again, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. But is this the whole truth about life and death? Is there nothing beyond this mortal existence? Job himself considers survival after death improbable. In the same passage from which the text comes, he concludes, and again I quote, A man dies and he vanishes. He breathes his last, and what becomes of him? As the waters in a lake evaporate, as a river shrinks to a trickle and dries up, so man lies down and does not rise again. That's Job for you in the same passage from which. He asks, in which he asks the question, if a man dies, shall he live again? Those of us from the same era of Leslie would recall the old cynic, William Shakespeare. <laughs> he no doubt thought that he had it right. When in one of our favorites, Macbeth, he declared, and I quote again, Life is but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard from no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Why? I have a confession to make. In those days when I did literature and did Shakespeare and so on, I had a tendency to, to want to believe that. But if, according to these famous people, death signals the end of everything. If death means our personal extinction, if 
there is no afterlife. If our individual identities disappear after death, if there is no immortality, if there is no resurrection, then death is something with which we do not need to come to terms. It simply happens and it is ridiculous to be afraid of it. It will be quite in order, quite in order to dismiss it as Shakespeare did through another character, Julius Caesar, as a necessary end that will come when it will come. So said Shakespeare. Death is a necessary end that will come when it will come. Far more seriously, my friends, if death were final, then the whole Christian gospel is a lie. If death had the last say, the Christian faith is based on a falsehood and the Christian hope is a delusion Paul declares in 1st Corinthians 15 and verse 19 if our Christian hope applies to this life only then of all people we are most to be pitied if our Christian hope and our Christian life is determined only here and now, then others would have to pity us as Christians. Belief in a life hereafter is one of the foundation pillars of our Christian faith. Remove this belief and Christianity will no longer stand. It will inevitably fall. Says Paul again to the same Corinthians, and I quote, If there is no resurrection of the dead, our gospel is futile and vain, and so is our faith. Paul harbored no uncertainties about the resurrection and the life hereafter. His unbelief, his doubts, his intolerance and hatred of those who believe in the promises of the resurrected Christ all vanished when one day he had a dramatic encounter with the living Christ on the road to Damascus. Whatever doubts he had about the Christian hope and belief vanished on that memorable day when the risen Christ confronted him on the road to Damascus. For him, after that, in his own words, he said, For me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For Paul, the things of time and history became important only, only insofar as they prepared us for eternity. This life is only important to the extent that it prepares us for a fuller life 
beyond the here and now. In Paul's view, this world is significant only when viewed in light of another world. It has its origin and finds its explanation, not within itself, but beyond itself, in eternity, in heaven, in God. In simple terms, my friends, if there is no life after this life, if there is no resurrection, then we are, all of us, condemned to pessimism and despair then it will be perfectly right to say with the man in Holy Scripture, let us eat, drink, and be merry. And like our own ancestors and parents and grandparents and so on have said, you eat, drink, and be merry because when you're dead, you're done. If this mortal existence then were all that we have, then the accumulated wisdom of the ages, the wonderful achievement of human hands and minds, many of you present here today, wonderful people, outstanding people, people who serve, people who are serious and, and honest, and people who sacrifice, if this mortal existence were all there was, then you'll be doing all of that in vain. The acts of faith and love, the heroic virtues and contributions, a person like Leslie will rise to the surface for a moment and then disappear forever. Yes, yes, the whole process of creation on this reckoning ends in victory for the last enemy, death. But if this world is the creation of a God who is wise and holy and kind and merciful and understanding, then it is hardly conceivable that the whole remarkable history of mankind is destined to finish in the dust where it began. My God, our hearts cry out, don't they, against such a conclusion. For it goes against everything we have lived for and believed in. It goes against the Christian message of hope and joy and victory with the emphasis on the resurrection and a life hereafter. And so therefore today our answer from our own experiences, from the love we enjoy, love which never ends, my dear sister, the love you have for your husband, the love you have for your brother, your father never ends. Never ends. From your own experience, from what you feel now, even when it's the grief and your pain and suffering, you cry out to draw and you answer him now. And you said, behave yourself. If a man dies, he shall live again. This is not the end. They tried nearly 2,000 years ago. They tried to kill love on the cross. You read about that? You read about it? And on the third day, on the third day, love rose up again with more power and 
and authority than it had before. Yes! That is our faith. That is our belief. If a man dies, he shall live again. Our Jesus conquered death. And the glory and the completeness of that victory has chased away. Yes, Sister Jacobs, chased away the dread of the unknown. The valley of the shadow of death has lost its terrors. It holds no terror for us because as we heard read, chosen by the family and spoken by David many centuries ago, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil and not even death itself. For thou art with me. Yes, and it goes on, and it? Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And what? I shall? Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. You hear it? I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It is this conviction. It is this love. More than anything else which enabled Leslie to find the meaning and the purpose that he obviously found in life. It is this conviction that helped him to face the challenges and to endure the pain of disappointment with courage. Every person to whom I have spoken, including my own staff, one of whom cried when they heard that he died. Said it was never a nicer gentleman than him. My wife who worked with him many years ago at the Cap said the same testimony. People from this church tell me the same thing. I put it to you today, my brothers and sisters. That is because of his conviction, his deep conviction that this is not here, that there is a life out of it, his deep and abiding faith and belief in Jesus Christ that made him into the man, the person to whom, to whose life we pay tribute, tribute today, and for whom we thank God. And so I commend you today. I commend you, Sister Jacobs. I commend you and your family and Leslie's family to this everlasting God, this resurrected Jesus who has won the victory for us. And yes, yes, let us confirm to all the jobs of this world who still ask the question, if a man dies, shall he live again? Let us say, with confidence at all times. Yes. 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 If a man dies, he shall live again. Your husband, your father, your brother, our friend Leslie fought the good fight. He kept the faith. He finished his course. Therefore, there is laid up for him a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to him on that day. And we are confident about that for we know, we know that when Jesus Christ is Lord in our lives, when we die, we shall live again. Say it with me. When we die, we shall live again. Amen and amen and amen. Yes. And let us just sing the chorus. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. We sit and sing it together. It's number one in the hymnal, my dear.
joy in days of health and strength, for the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief, we thank you. We praise you for home and friends and family and for our distinguished place in each other's lives and in the church, even with all who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else today, O oh Father God, we thank you for the life of our brother, husband, father, friend, co-worker, neighbor, listen, even as we thank you for Jesus Christ, who knew our griefs, 
who died our death and rose for our sin and who lives and prays for us. Yes, O oh God, all that you have given us is yours. As first you gave Leslie to us, and so now we formally give Leslie back to you. Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant Leslie. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeemed. Receive Leslie into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints of life. This eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and let light of petrol shine upon him. And together we say the Lord's Prayer. And I invite you, as I always do, when you get to those immortal words, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Raise those hands and affirm it. So together, our Father, what is it? That will be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Raise those hands. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.
behalf of Sister Beverly Ann Jacobs. She would like for me to express the sincerest appreciation and deep gratitude of the family and of herself to all of you who took part today to support her in this celebration service for her dear husband, Leslie Wilberforce Drake. In particular, she would want to express her fondest appreciation to families and friends here and overseas, and most especially her INIS family and to the director and to all those persons who supported her through prayers, through calls, through visits, through the sending of wreaths, and by your very presence here in this very difficult time of loss. The family would also like to say to you that after the internment in the cemetery, they would like a time of quiet reflection at home. But we do, we do offer you, and on behalf of the Methodist Church and the family of the Methodist Church, and in particular the Calico Methodist Church, we offer to you our sincerest appreciation for being here and all of your presence in so many different ways. Thank you very much. Our benediction. Go forth, O Christian people, in the name of God, the Father who made you. In the name of Christ, the Son who redeemed you. In the name of the Spirit which makes you holy. Go forth and tell the world by your love and your service that you are followers of Christ and that you are unashamedly and confidently a believer in eternal life. And may God the Father bless you. May God the Son save you. And may God the Holy Spirit keep company with you now and always. Amen.
we are still online and we are awaiting the procession the weather is looking very overcast and they will be proceeding marching towards this area right across here it may take a, uh, probably another half an hour not sure but um, we, are, we are we are staying staying live yep. yes we are keeping you posted with what is happening with our stream at the moment the weather is dry Live, the weather is overcast. Just now, maybe it's, it's going to rain. So we are live, we are still um, broadcasting, keeping you posted with what is happening.
We begin the committal. We know that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We know that if this earthly house of our tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Since our brother Leslie has departed out of this life, and Almighty God in his mercy has taken him to himself, we therefore commit his body to the ground, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, Earth to earth, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, From now forward, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Let us pray. O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, raise us up, we pray, from the death of sin to the new life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life, we shall be found acceptable in your sight. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And grant, O Heavenly Father, to the grieving family, consolation and faith in this time of distress and trial. Grant to them the blessed hope in the coming of your kingdom, the sustaining grace in the fellowship of your people, and steadfastness in the service of your name and the doing of your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And support us, O Lord God, all the day long of this troublous life until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work on earth is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant unto us safe lodging, holy rest, and peace at last, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we say, with the grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. When the roll is called, beyond Where your anchor With your anchor hold.
Now we're going to crown him with oh. roses. Yes? Oh, yeah. Crown him. Yes? Get the wreaths and the flowers. Mummy? Yeah. 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 Yeah.